breaking news tonight. Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. His attorney tells CNN that he is currently being processed. The charges are unclear as of this moment. For the first time since being arrested, Diddy voiced his displeasure with the earlier incidents. According to the New York Times, Diddy was taken into custody in the evening of September 16th at a hotel in Manhattan. This occurred after he was involved in a series of allegations and was investigated by the federal government for possible drug trafficking. This arrest followed the music entrepreneur's grand jury indictment, the site said. Formal allegations against Diddy are currently being kept under wraps, and it is yet unclear exactly which charges resulted in his imprisonment. But Mark Agnifilo, the artist's attorney, believes the charge has something to do with both racketeering and human trafficking moment we don't know what the charges are i have uh information that he was arrested tonight at a manhattan hotel he is currently being processed i heard from his attorney they are still maintaining his innocence they said that in anticipation of these charges that diddy relocated to new york last week Combs's attorneys released a lengthy statement expressing their displeasure with the prosecution's decision and stressing their client's full cooperation throughout the investigation, which includes his recent voluntary move to New York last week. In their statement, Combs' lawyers described Diddy as a self-made businessman, music icon, loving husband and father and well-known philanthropist. For the past 30 years, Diddy has devoted his time to building an empire, parenting his kids, and supporting the African-American community. While admitting that he was not a flawless guy, his defense attorneys denied that he had breached any laws. Damian Williams, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, announced on X Monday that Diddy's indictment will be made public by tomorrow morning. He said that more details would be provided after that, according to Mr. Agnifilo, at around 8.30 p.m., agents from Homeland Security Investigations detained Combs, 54, at the Park Hyatt on 57th Street in New York. The arraignment is on Tuesday. Unbeknownst to some, Combs was a major player in the 1990s and 2000s hip-hop industry, launching the careers of well-known rappers and RB singers like Mary J, Blige, and the late great B.I.G. However, his reputation was harmed when RB singer Cassandra Ventura, who was also his ex-partner, filed a lawsuit in November of last year, accusing him of mistreatment. The same day the matter was filed, it was settled in confidence. In the months that followed, Diddy was the target of other lawsuits, three of which claimed misbehavior and five more which accused him of mistreatment. Diddy's legal team is adamantly defending Diddy in court. In March, Combs' houses in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by federal agents. Although the authorities declined to make any public statements, a federal source told the New York Times that the investigation was centered on human trafficking. By then, federal prosecutors had questioned several witnesses regarding allegations of misconduct involving Combs, popularly known as P. Diddy or Puff Daddy. Combs has fiercely denied the allegations in the court cases, calling them the baseless assertions of people looking for a quick payday. His lawyers, meanwhile, fiercely condemned the Homeland Security investigation searches on his property, calling them a gross misuse of authority worthy of the military. The prior tone of resistance changed to defensiveness when CNN premiered hotel security footage showing Combs abusing Ventura in 2016. Combs issued an apology on social media after the video was made public, acknowledging his errors and labeling them as unacceptable. Ventura also voiced her opinions, appealing with listeners to trust victims when they initially share their stories. A wide range of responses have been shared online in the wake of Sean Combs' arrest and indictment, which gained widespread attention. For instance, in the comments area of influencer Kira's post, a previous user uploaded a meme that mentioned R. Kelly. The former artist, who is presently serving a lengthy prison sentence after being accused of federal racketeering and trafficking, was mentioned in the meme's title. R. Kelly is ready to go, Diddy was made fun of. 
Many more individuals joined the discussion on the platform, responding with gifts and phrases appropriate for an R. Kelly related meme. It'll be just like old times someone wrote. It was written, R. Kelly spotting Diddy in the lunch line. Another person made the observation, I guess the prison squad's recruiting celebrities now, will Kelly be joined by any well-known individuals? Although the specific allegations Diddy is facing are yet unknown, they might be related to the FBI raids that took place at his homes in Miami and Los Angeles earlier this year. Homeland Security investigations agents inspected Combs' homes on both coasts in March as part of an ongoing investigation. Breaking news, the Department of Homeland Security has just confirmed to CNN that federal law enforcement agents have raided properties owned by musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. Many of Diddy's colleagues, including his kids Christian and Justin, were shown being hauled into prison and interrogated in a video of the raid that went viral online. According to later accounts, the authorities confiscated a number of technological gadgets and weaponry from the locations. At the time, Combs' legal team denounced the operation, describing it as a blatant misuse of military-grade force. A person with knowledge of the situation has told NBC News that at least four persons have been interviewed over claims of human trafficking, abuse, and the illegal sale and distribution of drugs and weapons. Aaron Dyer, Combs' attorney, has described the searches conducted in March as a flagrant misuse of force equal to that of the military. Several lawsuits had been filed against Combs before the raid. In official remarks made public through his representatives, Combs has explicitly refuted each of these accusations. The singer Cassie, who had a brief relationship with Combs, shocked everyone in November when she brought a lawsuit against him. In the lawsuit, she claimed that the music mogul had mistreated her during their romance. Under the Adult Survivors Act of New York, which gets around the standard statute of limitations and allows adult survivors of assault to pursue civil claims for up to a year, the lawsuit was brought on November 16th. In the case, Cassie claimed that Combs had mistreated her, severely regulated her life, and hit her when she got angry. She said he would force her to do freaky acts with other men, generally employees he paid to accompany her, all the while he watched. Even if the abuse started in 2007, Cassie is said to have left him in late 2018. Combs angrily refuted Cassie's claims. The lawsuit was settled on the same day it was filed. Joy Dickerson Neal revealed on Na V. 23. The day before the Adult Survivors Act was set to expire, that Cassie's case encouraged her to bring a lawsuit against Combs. Dickerson Neal claimed in 1991 that Combs had drugged her, abused her, and had covertly recorded the attack while she was a Syracuse University student. In her case, she claimed that while on winter break from college on January 3, 1991, she had given Combs permission to have dinner. The meal took place in Harlem. Combs allegedly purposely gave her a drug there before taking her to his hotel, according to the lawsuit. Despite Combs abusing her, Dickerson Neal claimed that she was incapable of protecting herself, either physically or emotionally. According to the lawsuit, she eventually found out that Combs had recorded the abuse on camera and shared it with others via a male friend. Combs, however, has refuted these claims. Lisa Gardner filed a case on the final day of her eligibility under the Adult Survivors Act alleging that Combs had molested her when she was 16 years old. Gardner claimed to have met Combs and R.B. singer Aaron Hall in 1990 or 1991 when she and a friend attended an MCA Records event in Manhattan. She was welcomed back to Hall's apartment with Combs following the party, according to the lawsuit, and they continued to serve her drinks there the entire evening. The lawsuit claims that Gardner was shocked and appalled when Combs forced her into having sex. After Combs finished, Hall is reported to have gone into the room, pinned her down, and attacked her. When NBC News asked Hall for a statement on the accusation, Hall did not respond. Gardner's allegations were denied in a statement released by Combs through his agent. Then, in December, a Jane Doe filed a lawsuit against Combs, claiming that Harve Pierre, the longtime head of Combs' record label, had abused Pierre and was involved in human trafficking. The anonymous lady stated that Combs was 34 years old and that she was only 17 years old when the 2003 event occurred. She met Combs and Pierre at a Detroit lounge, according to the lawsuit, and Combs persuaded her to take a private plane with them to New York City. Pierre allegedly used F and made Doe do an oral act with him before they left the lounge. The lawsuit asserted that once Doe was brought to a studio in New York City, Combs, Pierre, and a third defendant gave her copious amounts of booze and drugs. 
The lawsuit alleges that she was too drunk to give permission, so the three guys allegedly took turns effing her in a studio lavatory. According to the lawsuit, the guys flew her back to Michigan after leaving her on the restroom floor. Combs refuted any violent accusations, while Pierre labeled the case as a work of fiction. In a federal lawsuit filed in February, a guy going by the name of Rodney Lilrod Jones asserted that Combs and his friends were involved in significant criminal activity. Jones states in his lawsuit that he lived and traveled with Combs from September 2022 to November 2023 and that he provided Combs with his most recent record. At this time, Jones says, Combs mistreated him, had him do things, made him schedule meetings with staff, and he witnessed Combs serving drug-laced drinks to partygoers. According to the lawsuit, Combs let Jones continuously film him, which allowed Jones to view hours of video that allegedly showed Combs and his employees acting illegally. The case contained screen grabs of parties that were purportedly attended by workers and minors. Will Combs, according to Jones, was trying to entice him into a romantic relationship. According to the lawsuit, Combs allegedly mistreated Jones on a boat he rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands as well as at his residences in Florida, Los Angeles, and New York. According to Jones, Combs instructed him and another man named Brendan Paul to travel with guns and high on drugs. Combs and his son denied being involved in a 2022 shooting at a Los Angeles music studio, which Jones further accused them of in their updated complaints. Combs' attorney asserted that Jones' heedless mentioning of entirely made-up occurrences that never occurred is nothing more than a blatant publicity stunt. On March 25th, agents from the Homeland Security Investigations conducted raids at Combs' homes in Miami and Los Angeles. Weapons had been discovered at the residences. According to three persons with knowledge of the situation who spoke with NBC News, no additional information was given. Prior to leaving on his planned trip to the Bahamas, Combs was being held in a Miami airport at the time of the raids officials allegedly took away his phones, according to sources. In a statement made after the raids, Combs' attorney Dyer stated that Combs never entered detention and instead interacted and cooperated with authorities. He referred to the raid as an ambush and said that there has been a rush to judgment based on unfounded allegations made in civil disputes. None of these allegations, according to Dyer, have led to a determination of criminal or civil culpability. Mr. Combs will not give up on clearing his record because he is innocent. Brendan Paul, 25, was detained at Miami OPA Laca Executive Airport contemporaneous with Combs' arrival at the same location. A law enforcement source familiar with the matter has confirmed Paul's ties to Combs. Whether Paul's detention was related to the recent raids is still uncertain. In Jones's lawsuit, Paul was identified as a Combs employee in charge of procuring and reselling drugs and firearms on Combs's behalf. Combs offered Paul and other individuals he bribed to carry black pouches carrying various drugs, including ecstasy, according to the lawsuit. Paul was accused of carrying suspected cocaine and marijuana candy, according to a Miami-Dade police complaint. Court records state that he was released on bond the following day. The police report states that local law enforcement, together with agents from Homeland Security and Customs, were present when Paul was taken into custody. Paul's carry-on bag included the illegal goods, According to the story, Paul's attorney Brian Bieber disclosed one of his lowest moments. He went to rehabilitation and therapy. In the video Combs said, My actions are unacceptable I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I detest it. I felt humiliated when I did it in the past. I feel disgusted now. Meredith Firetog, Cassie's attorney, asserted in a statement that Combs' contrite video was more about him than the many individuals he had injured. I don't apologize even when I've hit my lowest point. My behavior in that video is not appropriate. I bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. That his victims desired rapid wealth. His pathetic desperation is clear from the fact that he had to admit his mistakes only after his repeated denials were proven false, and his deceptive claims will never persuade anyone. Dawn early in September 2024, Richard, a former member of the musical group Danity Kane, which Combs put together for the MTV reality show Making the Band, filed a lawsuit. Richard said that Combs had threatened her life when she tried to step in on behalf of Cassie Combs's then-girlfriend, and that Combs had sexually harassed, mistreated, and illegally imprisoned her. Combs was sued for allegedly threatening Richard's life by claiming in court that he could make people vanish and could even kill them if he so chose. 
Richard claims that she tried to step in more than once, encouraging Cassie and putting pressure on her to leave Combs. The Manhattan US attorney for Com claims that Richard's lawsuit shocked and upset his client. Federal agents detained Combs on Monday, September 16, in response to a sealed indictment that the Southern District of New York filed earlier this evening. We will release more details when we plan to unseal the indictment, which is expected to happen in the morning. Damon Williams, the attorney for the Southern District of New York, stated in a statement that Combs, his client, was the subject of an unfair prosecution. Even if Combs is an imperfect guy, it won't reflect poorly on him because he is innocent and will clear his record. Please wait to make a decision until you have all the information. In reaction to these accusations, Mr. Combs moved voluntarily to New York last week and has cooperated with the investigation. Agnophila support in a textual declaration. These actions are those of an innocent individual who wants to clear his name before our court and who has nothing to conceal. A judge in Michigan's Lansing County Circuit Court recently reversed a $100 million default judgment against Compass following the filing of a civil action by convict Eric Lee Cardello Smith in June, in which he claimed that Compass had mistreated him at a party in 1997. In August, the case was brought before the court in order to discuss a request for a temporary restraining order. Cardello Smith declared he will pursue a default judgment when Combs failed to respond to the case in the time given. Combs failed to appear at the Monday hearing. Cole's payment plan was established by Judge Anna Marie Anzalone at $10 million per month for 10 months beginning on October 1st. In an email to The Times, attorney and Oliverius, the senior partner and chair of law firm McAllister Oliverius, explained that while default judgments are frequent, the stakes are high because it is uncommon for a defendant to just disregard proper service combs. Cole's attorney could only conclude that by choosing not to respond to Derek Lee Cardello Smith's service, they accepted a calculated risk, knowing that the judge had found Smith's service to be appropriate. Cobbs has denied most of the charges of wrongdoing leveled against him, but he has been the subject of federal investigation due to allegations of trafficking, which led to raids on his houses in Miami and Los Angeles in March. In addition, he apologized in public for something that happened to Cassie Ventura after it was discovered that he had beaten her badly when they were together. Through his attorneys, Cobbs refuted the claims and charged Cardello Smith with deceiving the court while incarcerated. The raids on all of ARS's properties as part of an investigation into illicit trafficking serve as a reminder that the civil justice system may lend firepower to a criminal system that often finds it difficult to handle, even if he has not yet been charged with a crime. Civil courts can help bring serial abusers to justice by drawing attention to themselves from the public. Currently facing several allegations of criminal conduct and kidnapping is Cardello Smith, an inmate at the Ernest C. Brooks Correctional Facility. Online records show that Smith was a plaintiff in more than 30 civil actions between 2020 and 2024, several of which had a prisoner rights focus. Smith has a lengthy history of using civil cases to challenge the legal system, according to the Detroit Metro Times. Cardello Smith claims to have met Combs in 1997 while working at an event. He says he was mistreated by Combs at that period. Generally, a default judgment results from a defendant failing to appear in court or failing to respond to a summons. While Oliverius not cooperating with the courts is a poor defense tactic, in some cases it is also something that the defense can easily ignore. A defendant who is subject to a default judgment may move the court to vacate the judgment. The process usually entails the plaintiff requesting that the judge make a decision on the matter without the defendant's involvement because the defendant has neglected to respond to the complaint, though the precise standards and steps may vary according on the jurisdiction. This option is accessible if the defendant has a valid excuse for not appearing in court or responding, such as the fact that inadequate process serving prevented them from learning about the action. Make sure to watch some of our other videos that are visible on the screen if you enjoyed this one.